Hey everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the new GA feature, Azure AD one-time passcode. I want to sort of cover where this has come from and then what the end user experience actually is. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated. Now as an organization, we think about we have an Azure AD tenant. Now that Azure AD tenant has maybe accounts that I create directly within, so cloud accounts within my Azure AD. Or more commonly, if I have an existing AD, well, I have accounts here, and then through a process, Azure AD Connect, those accounts are synchronized up into Azure AD. Uh, ideally, we have kind of the hash of the password hash replicated up as well, so I can authenticate directly against Azure AD. And then what happens is we have various services trust that Azure AD instance for the identity provider. Now, obvious ones. I can think about things like, well, obviously Azure. I can think about the various Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, but it could also be kind of these third-party SaaS solutions. All of those can trust my particular Azure AD tenant. So now my identities and those SaaS applications could be internal ones as well that I've created. So they can now all be used by the people in my Azure AD. Now I can think about the authentication is happening in my Azure AD tenant from my accounts. Now, if I'm using federation or I'm using pass through authentication, then the auth and the authentication proving who I am may happen on my domain controllers. But it's happening in my kind of control realm. And then separately, after we authenticate, we authorize, i.e. what can I do? So then we have kind of the authorization, the auth Z, now that may start with conditional access, checking maybe where I'm coming from, um, is there certain levels of risk, do I require MFA? And then we have kind of role assignment, role-based access control, maybe various apps that are assigned that controls what I can actually do. So it's great for people in my company. But then I have these partners, people I want to collaborate with. Maybe want to work on a SharePoint site with them, maybe operate with certain Azure resources, maybe it's some third party SaaS or an app I have created. Now, in the bad old days, uh, I would go and create them an account, either in my AD or my Azure AD. That's bad for everyone. It's bad for them, it's another credential to remember or more likely forget, or use the same password as they're using everywhere else, which is a risk. It's bad for me that I have to maintain their identity and help them reset it. It's bad for their company that if they leave the company, that company now has to scramble trying to deactivate a whole bunch of accounts. So what we have is this process of B2B, business to business, i.e. adding external identities as known security principles to my Azure AD. Now I can think about this could be an account in another Azure AD tenant. This could be a Microsoft account. It could kind of be a Gmail. It could be a direct Fed, like a WS Fed or SAML. So here, we're doing this B2B, we're adding those users in. Now this could be a direct invite, and this could be entitlement management where I have packages and I whitelist certain domains, and then go and self-register. But essentially now this identity becomes known to my Azure AD. So the authentication is happening against their home identity provider. And that's good for them, it's a good experience. They're already signed in, it's fairly seamless. And then that's proving who they are, and then the authorization still happens on my tenant, conditional access, roles, RBAC, etc. If they left their company, they'd lose access to these things. They, they can't access the system anymore. But what about if they don't have one of these? So I'm a different user, and I don't have any of those things. But I have an email mailbox. 
Now that mailbox ideally is part of my company's organization. And this is where one-time passcode comes in. So if none of these things can apply, I can fall back to one-time passcode. Because without this, I'd either have to go and create a Microsoft account, which maybe I don't want to do, or there used to be this kind of unmanaged viable just-in-time Azure AD tenant, which is kind of messy. So if none of these can apply, and if I turn it on on my Azure AD tenant, well now I can do one-time passcode. So when I try and authenticate and use some service, it will actually email me this passcode to my mailbox. And each time it's valid, I think it's for 30 minutes that I have to kind of use that passcode within. Now, the experience is the same. I still invite this, this user. Um, and again, if none of these apply, it will fall back to this one-time passcode. So let's, let's kind of see this in action. And you may notice this looks a little bit funny. So I have a guest, um, the kid. So Grogu uh, is going to help me with this. And it's kind of the slightly strange picture. Um, you may wonder which one is Grogu. I'd say it's the bald one with big ears, and that may not help you distinguish. So I'll say the green one. And Grogu from a, another galaxy doesn't have any of these things, but wants to access something that's trust my Azure AD tenant. And so Grogu has a Yahoo account from a way, way distant galaxy. Um, didn't really know any better. So we're going to walk through that. So if I jump over to my Azure AD tenant, the first thing to look at is my kind of external identity configuration. Now, I did already add Google, so I can add Gmails as external identities. But in my external collaboration settings, down here at the bottom, you can see I have got email one-time passcode for guests. Now, this is going to get enabled for everyone from March 2021. If you didn't want it, you could go and disable it. Now, again, adding an external identity doesn't really give them any permissions. Other than there is some stuff they can query in Azure AD, and even that you can control with these settings up here. And I have a whole separate video that walks through this, but if you don't want them to be able to enumerate groups and who's in them, well, I could change guest access to this super restrictive. They can literally only see their own settings. But I've enabled one-time passcode. So now if I go and look at my users, I just add this the same way as anything else. I'll just do new guest user, put in the name and email address. Now, I've already added Grogu. So if I go back to my users, you can see here I have baby Grogu. And notice the identity issuer is just mail. It couldn't do anything else. It's not another Azure AD tenant. It's not, for example, down here, you can see I added the Gmail mailbox. So you can see it's google.com is the issuer. If I actually go and look at the account, we can actually see the source is one-time passcode. And I say external identity, uh, by default, an external identity would be a guest, but it is possible to make external identities members. If maybe it was a company that we'd acquired and merged, maybe guest isn't the right thing. So you can change that. Okay, so they've been added. So the first thing they would have done is they actually would have got an invitation and they would accept that invitation. Once that's been redeemed, well, now they want to access something. Now they have to use a specific link that gives me a domain hint, tells me what tenant. If I, for example, just try to go to portal.azure.com, well, it has no way of knowing what tenant. So if I typed in that Yahoo email address, it's going to fail. So I have to give it a domain hint. So this could be a custom domain if you have one, mine is saveltech.net. It could be your whatever it is, dot on Microsoft.com. So now, notice I'd already done the Grogu the Kid. So if I do that, I'd have to type in pick an account. I could use another account and just type in the email address and hit next. So it's now emailed a code. If I go back and refresh my Yahoo mailbox, it may take a second. 
Okay, we can see I've got the code. And here I would now copy that code. So you can see it's not the most pleasant experience for the user. I would paste that in. But essentially now, so I authenticated against my home Azure AD. And I could do the same thing for kind of my app. So if I went to myapps.microsoft.com, I would have to once again give that domain hint. And now once again, I could type in, well, what is that username? So I have my Grogu the kid at yahoo.com. And once again, I'm going to get a code. And there it is. Sent to my mailbox. And I would type that in. And now I'm authenticated. So this is the whole idea that, hey, look, if, if I can't use one of those other types of identity, um, I can kind of switch this over and I default to that one-time passcode. And again, if Grogu left the Galactic Empire, and let's pretend that was a Galactic Empire local server, then they wouldn't be able to get to the mailbox, wouldn't be able to get the one-time passcode. So that's one-time passcode. Um, it's that idea that, hey, uh, if I can't do any of those other things, which would be the preferred, I can fall back now to anything. If I have a mailbox, I can be an external user to my Azure AD. Um, and then remember the regular authorization, the conditional access, the role assignments, just like anything else would apply. Add them to groups, for example. They're, they're going to show up exactly the same way. Assign them applications and uh, just integrate and collaborate with them. So we hope that was useful. We hope that cleared up the one-time passcode. Um, until next time. Oh. Um, stay safe.